Before we begin, today we have a sponsor, and if you're interested in this channel's videos, this is something that you definitely might want to check out. NordVPN are giving censored gaming viewers a huge discount plus one month free by going to nordvpn.com forward slash censored gaming or via the link in the description. Now, I personally use NordVPN on a daily basis. It's great for not just keeping your internet activity private, but also bypassing any regional restrictions on the web. It also, unlike many competitors, has a true no data logging policy that has been verified numerous times by an independent audit and tons of other really useful features. And so again, go to nordvpn.com forward slash censored gaming and use the code censored gaming at checkout to get a huge discount on Walmart free. And it's also risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Have you ever wondered what a completely inoffensive, truly politically correct video game would look like? Well, once upon a time there was a video game created that set out to achieve this very thing. Created by none other, and quite fittingly, the famous comedic magician duo, Penn & Teller. Is that your card, John? The two of spades? Oh, two of spades. For those not familiar with Penn & Teller, Penn & Teller are one of the most famous magician acts in the modern age. However, it's not just magic that they are well known for, but they are also famous for their heavy use of comedy, as well as their very outspoken views on the world, and in particular lots of things that they would refer to as being bullshit. For instance, they used to have a television show that went on for 8 seasons. The show was called simply Penn & Teller Bullshit, and went on from 2003 to 2010, and would see the duo tackle a range of subjects and explain why they think they are bullshit. Shouldn't a public university follow the free speech rules of our fucking country? So let's really talk about this. Everyone is offended by something that's good. People should be fucking judgmental. They should fucking speak out against things they hate or split. Also, just to clarify, whilst being very outspoken in their views, half of the duo, this being Teller, never speaks when performing, instead utilizing heavy physical comedy comparable to actors such as Mr. Bean. The game was featured in Penn & Teller's Smoke and Mirrors for the Sega CD, or as Penn liked to refer to it in interviews as Penn & Teller's S. M. Penn & Teller's Smoke and Mirrors is a game that only they could come up with. Largely being a collection of different mini-games which were designed to play cruel tricks on your friends. I am Mofo, the Psychic Gorilla. As well as an adventure platform game starring none other than Penn & Teller themselves. The game also features many funny video clips of the duo with them introducing the games and in cutscenes. Get him, get him. Come on, go, pound that sucker, yeah, chest move, finish up, death move, death move, death move, death move, death move, death move, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, the winner and still champion, I will be back to kill again, <laughs> It's clear that a lot of time and effort went into this game. However, unfortunately, the publishers, Absolute Entertainment, ended up going out of business right before the game was scheduled to be released. This meant that Smoke and Mirrors had to be placed on indefinite hold, and it was ultimately never released officially. And according to Teller, by the time the game was finished, the Sega CD format was pretty much dead, and so they were unable to find anybody interested in acquiring the game. Despite this, however, review copies had already been sent out to journalists and reviews published in magazines, and the game was achieving some pretty decent reviews. And due to these review copies being sent out, this led to, in 2005, a journalist who kept his review copy sent his copy over to the website Lost Levels, which is dedicated to unreleased video games, which then led to it being released on the internet, and since then it's gone on to become a big cult hit. The part of the game that this video will be focusing on, however, is Desert Bus. Desert Bus which is considered by Penn to be the best part of the collection. And on the March 1st, 2006 edition of his personal podcast, he says, Desert Bus kind of lives on as an example of a truly politically correct um, uh, game. And as we go into it some more, you'll see why. Now, Penn & Teller have later gone on to explain that the game was co-created with Eddie Gorgetsky. Eddie Gorgetsky is one of the producers on TV shows like Two and a Half Men and The Big Bang Theory. And basically, Basically, Desert Buzz is designed to be the complete antithesis for concern over offensive content in video games. So what do you get when you design a game trying to be as inoffensive as possible? It starts off pretty exciting. At the title screen you have the Desert Bus logo and this groovy music. 
You then clock into your shift as a bus driver, where it tells you that you'll be driving from Arizona all the way to Las Vegas. But then when you press the stop button, the music suddenly disappears and you're left in the seat of the bus. And the energy and momentum quickly evaporates, and things take a drastically different direction than what you may have been expecting. This isn't some kind of cool road trip all the way to Vegas. Instead, it is a grueling reflection of the realities of real, real life, which is something that that getting away from is something that many people would say is one of the reasons why they play video games in the first place, just like any other form of media. But yes, Desert Bus is a long 360 miles trip to Las Vegas. It isn't exciting and it isn't pretty. You can travel at the max speed of 45 miles per hour. And if you do the math and calculate 360 miles, that results in a eight hour journey. And what this game is, is a eight hour journey. It takes eight hours to drive from Arizona to Vegas. And that is the objective of the game, to sit in this bus for eight hours to drive to Vegas. But that's far from all. The road is just one completely straight line and there is no traffic. And the only scenery is nothing but desert and these rocks. You cannot stop the bus for more than just a slight moment, otherwise the bus will overheat. And the game cannot be paused. With the instruction manual commenting, no, it's not an oversight, does your life have a pause control? But that's still not all. The bus veers to the right ever so slightly. This means that the game requires the player's constant attention to make sure it doesn't steer off the road. And if it does go off the road, there is no special crash animation or anything. It just very, very slowly gets stuck. Then what happens is you will get towed back to the start of the game in real time. So if you've been driving for three, four, five hours, it's going to take three, four, five hours for you to get towed back to the start of the game. Yes, this is the game that Penatella envisioned to be as inoffensive as possible and to critique moral panics and the notion that games should be inoffensive. Penn and Teller are no strangers to calling out concern over video game content. In the TV show mentioned earlier, Penn and Teller Bullshit, in season 7 episode 3, the entire episode was about video games and the idea that video games lead to real life violence. This is boring. What we need is a gun. Yeah, that's more like it. Video games without big fucking guns are bullshit! And then in 2012, Penn appeared on the Wendy Williams show. In the show, Penn adamantly defended video games and reminded people that research has consistently shown there is no link between video games and real life violence. Also, in case you were wondering what happens if you actually manage to drive eight hours to Vegas in Desert Bus, nowadays people have uploaded footage of them playing Desert Bus for eight hours, and all that happens is that out of nowhere the screen fades to black, and then you get one point. One point, and then the game asks you if you want to do overtime, which then starts the whole process all over again. Also, there's one other thing that happens during the eight hour journey, and this is that after around five hours of playing, a fly will splat into the window, and then you're left with the remains of the fly on the screen for the rest of the journey. Desert Bus has actually gone on to achieve some great things, however. Ever since 2007, there's been an annual charity event called Desert Bus for Hope. This has seen the game being live streamed for the charity Child's Play and has raised more than $6 million. This has also seen the game being re-released for Google Play and iOS, with all the proceeds going to the Child's Play charity. What are your thoughts on Desert Bus? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and a big thanks once again to our faithful sponsors at NordVPN. Until next time, thank you for watching.